Last time on Crazy TV, I talked about a top Brazilian model who was found homeless, and we dived into a potential dark side to the entertainment industry, especially modeling. And today, we have another top supermodel's life that ended too quickly. Many people think there's more to the story than it was published in the media. And how a beautiful model with everything she can possibly have, where did it go wrong? Was it the pressure of the modeling and beauty industry? A mysterious cult slash group she joined shortly before passing that was responsible or something else. And it also triggered me back to the memories when I was a trainee, the strict, unbelievable beauty standards now that I think about it that I had experienced, me going to cult-like places as well um, when I was a trainee. And I wonder if she went through something similar or even worse. This case also seems to be not as well known out there because it did happen in 2008. It was before obviously social media. Although this case was ruled as solved, is it really solved? And I would love to know your opinion. To allow me to continue making these videos, thank you guys so much because I told you guys YouTube algorithm has been very hard recently just by liking and subscribing. And a big shout out to today's partner that again allows me to continue making these videos, Two Dots. If you guys have been wondering what games to play next, I've got you. Two Dots have a minimalistic, beautiful image and graphics. It's a challenging puzzle game where you connect the dots. And it seemed pretty simple, but you guys, it's actually massaging your brain and pretty challenging as you go up. You get to go through gorgeous worlds, have collectibles. There's weekly events like scavenger hunt where you have to find hidden items on a map. Perfect to play on the airplane, on the train, which I have been doing, or anytime you just need a break from work. Love to play this game because it really has a calming vibe and energy to this game. The graphics really take me back to the simpler times. It is so beautiful. So if you really want to play a relaxing puzzle game to still massage your brain after listening to true crime, it's free to download on iOS and Android. And there's over 150 million downloads globally. You guys can scan this QR code right here to download. Again, it's free to play, so just try it and really help to support my channel just by checking out today's partners. After this episode, go download it, you guys. Thank you so much to Two Dots for partnering up today, and thank you guys for supporting my channel. It's uh, sneakers. <laughs> it's easy and it's comfortable and it's easy to run, you know. Вот, так что он поможет вам сохранить энергию в течение дня и поддержать вашу форму. Ruslana Korshinova was a 20-year-old top model born on July 2nd, 1987. She was 5 foot 8, originally born in Kazakhstan. She was allegedly from a bit of a lower class family and she always wanted to help her parents out. There is a saying that, you know, there are a lot of foreign models from a lower class family from different European countries and they really scout them to work in places like America, you know, Europe top fashion shows, especially modeling where it's based on purely your beauty Beauty, they start from such a young age. Just note, there isn't as much sources on Ruslana because this case did happen in 2000s and as we know, the internet and sharing information wasn't as big as today. Some say that Ruslana's family was doing well financially, like they, it's not like they were struggling. And some sources say, yes, they were struggling. So I'm gonna lean towards more that she was struggling financially, her family, because of how the story is going to turn out later on. At age 50, she was discovered by a modeling agent and was nicknamed the Russian Rapunzel because of her beautiful long blonde hair. She spoke English, German, Kazakh, and Russian, so very multilingual. And of course, on top of that, do you see her beautiful photos? And you guys, she literally looks like something out of a Disney princess movie, one of the most beautiful doll-like humans that I've ever seen. I mean, look at her nose. It is something that everyone <laughs> goes for, especially at plastic surgeries. Everyone wants that doll-like face. She was later signed to IMG modeling agents and a few other agencies in Europe. She also quickly moved to the US to start her modeling career at a young age. Quickly, due to her doll-like image, she got a lot of gigs. She was on the cover of French Ellie, British Vogue, modeling for top fashion brands. I mean, the list goes on and on of what kind of brand she modeled for. She also walked in fashion shows alongside with supermodels. And she finally gained global attention when she starred in a famous brand perfume commercial, looking like a European princess out of a fantasy movie grabbing an apple. It seems like she was doing pretty well financially at this time, especially at a young age. As she was getting higher paid gigs, she was working for higher brand names. She saved up enough money to even send back money to her family back in Kazakhstan, to her brother, 
father and her mother and I believe her father passed away when she was a young age. And by the time that she was only 20 years old, she was living in a very high-end apartment in financial districts in Manhattan, New York. I get this was 2008, but especially apartments in financial district are very expensive. I mean, I'm not sure how much the rent was back in 2008, but even today, like my friends who live in Manhattan, they pay such a high price for like the smallest apartments. But from where she started, from what I know, like models who start, they get paid so little. I heard like $100 a gig for like five, six hours of work or like throughout the whole day. And they have to share rooms with multiple roommates and pay like a crazy price a week just to try and keep up, you know, living in New York City to become a, hopefully a top supermodel one day. And unless you're like top model, like Naomi, Tyra Banks, and in today's age, like Bella Hadid, Kendall Jenner, the rest of the 99% of the models don't get paid that much. And because there's just so many beautiful models constantly coming and coming and coming, I mean, it seems like even at a young age to be kind of pushed away by even younger and younger and beautiful models. So technically, you know, where she came to be from where she started, she was doing pretty well. Think about it, all these young foreign models coming to another country, living with like roommates, not having your parents supervision, and you're also pushed into this like adult world of beauty standards and looking your best and you start that from such a young age that by the time you're an adult like 18 19 20 21 you know that's already embedded in your head you've also kind of been living like a wild child in my opinion without your parental supervision without going to proper school i personally wouldn't even let my future kid do that or even move out on their own before 18. a quote from an expert from the modeling industry says they're thrown into the lion's den and they're agents become their parents. A couple of them have parents who stay with them and they are the healthier ones. The agents try to make money off of them. If they want to get booked for jobs, they don't mind the girls flirting with a client. They turn a blind eye. Models can be very emotional and they are treated like meat a lot, like a commodity, and that takes your soul away. People around you like you for what you look like and not who you are. Going back to Ruslana, her being very young, beautiful and also doing well in her career she was also reached out a lot by wealthy men she attended these wealthy parties not for the normal people literally there are parties that are held by you know what the wealthy they invite all these models actresses singers there's also reports that she was invited to a private island by another wealthy figure there are rumors of who this wealthy man is but it's not fact checked so i don't even want to put it in this video but you know she got to write in private chats with other models, going to private islands, having this cool party hangout. So you kind of get to see what kind of lifestyle that Ruslana kind of had. And this is kind of where things I believe took a turn and again very similar to the top Brazilian model case. She started to date at a very young age. Once she turned you know 18, 19, she started to date a wealthy man. There are rumors that he was married. She got to ride in private jets, have gifts, and you know, he even promised to marry her as well. According to her friends, she just fell in love hard and gave all in to this relationship. And once you enter a relationship at that age, especially with the older guy, and they promise you all these things and lavish lifestyle and marriage, you really fall for it and believe it. You fall the hardest with your first love. But it's also that first heartbreak that I believe everyone has to go through as part of life experiences. So you know to not 100% lean on a relationship. Rosanna was described by her friends and peers as someone who was kind, always happy. But what once her first love, the wealthy boyfriend, broke up with her, this is when Ruslana, according to her friends, just everything changed for her. It seems like she went into a deep depression, according to her friends, but you know, who doesn't? It's your first love, it's your first breakup. I remember my first breakup and yeah, I was really depressed and I was really sad. I was crying, I'm bawling my eyes out for a couple days. But again, the difference is when you get into these kind of relationships, when you did not have parental supervision at a young age, it seems like your friends and your relationship partner is like your whole life and without them, you feel like you're gonna die. You don't have a control on your balance of your emotions again, because I feel like that is your parent's responsibility to teach you that. Although she looked pretty happy on the outside, it seemed like she was going through a lot on the inside. And her friends say she was writing these posts on her social media. So this is where things get iffy and we have to really pay attention to see what she might have been really going through. At age 20, 
just a few years into modeling, she started to concern her friends, saying that she wanted to quit the industry. She was sick of it. Now, we don't know to what details and why this was concerning her, Ruslana, why she wanted to quit. Um, but it could be that, you know, she's been running since the age of 15. Compete with other models, you know, continuously get the gigs to, to pay for your rent and food, and continuously still stick within the beauty standards of staying skinny beautiful and always in that like competition mode right friends think because of the breakup and the emotional roller coaster rosana would join a controversial group slash seminar slash classes slash cult called the rose of the world is basically a self-development class that strengthens your mind and helps you to have a better life and you have to pay money as well up to $300 a day for a class or a session. So people were really curious about Rose of the World and where we could get more information because these things are not like displayed on the internet or as an ad, right? So a journalist, Peter Pomersantiv, was researching into this Rose of the World to understand how this could have possibly affected Ruslana slash other people. He actually wrote a book and included this as well. And in the book, he describes Rose of the World as a cult, having reputation for dehumanizing treatment of its followers, including meetings characterized by shouting, confusion, and emotional domination. Peter himself, the journalist, actually joined this class slash group slash cult to experience it himself to see what it was firsthand. He said that there's also coaches that humiliated and blamed members for the wrongs of their lives and even described Roslana as a typical victim. Going more detail into Rose of the World, it's an organization based in Moscow that has grown out of the works of Russian mystic Daniel Andrev. The mystical writer aimed to unify concepts of the world's major religious, but also believed in reincarnation and karma. The cult grew out of a group known as Lifespring in the US in the 1980s. The organization went bankrupt after former members sued for mental health damage. Now, if what Peter said was true and this was his experience from his first-hand encounter, I actually believe that things like this exist and there are a lot of them and let me tell you why. When I was a trainee in Korea, I remember I went to this church, right? I joined a new company and you know, the company members were apparently going to this church. I could get a free ride on Sundays, you know, I was like, why not? I want to get closer to my, you know, company people and it was the weirdest thing that I've experienced. This pastor she was a female she was literally screaming on top of her lungs from the moment she got on this podium and i remember she would also criticize every single there was hundred people by the way hundreds of people that went to this church it was a big big church you guys i remember the pastor also like frequently criticizing everybody that came to the sermon of how they're not donating how the church needs money from you and how you have to donate it wasn't like oh please donate it was like forcing you and like shaming you for not donating no judge but the members also started to make odd noises like i said i understand but it was just the weirdest craziest vibe that i don't even know how i went to this church for a couple months. And I just remember meeting people there because there were actually celebrities and like models who went to this church. So I thought it was fine because these are celebrities and models that you see on TV. There must be something about this church that attracts people. Even the members who went to this church was just a little odd. It was just, just something off about them that I just can't explain till this day. So I just kind of stopped naturally going to this church because I just couldn't take it anymore. Just a lot of screaming and yelling and like, criticizing and I'm just like talking about the scratch to the surface of what I've seen so I absolutely believe that there's even more extreme groups, classes, cults, whatever you want to call it that's out there. So think about someone like Ruslana who's already going through an emotional roller coaster where someone might be going through something in their life emotionally, spiritually, physically that lean on these kind of messages and you know leaders who talk in that way, how it would affect you mentally. Ruslana's friends say short Shortly after her joining these classes, she started to change a lot. She was getting more agitated, taking out anger on herself, and blaming herself whenever a modeling gig wouldn't do so well, or if she would have a bad day, she would just harshly blame herself, kind of like what the self-development classes told you to do. She also started to write on social media some concerning things, frequently writing about finding herself and feeling 
lost. Rosanna was reported to have attended these classes for about two months. But after the first breakup with that boyfriend, it seemed like a couple months later, she started to do a little better. She got a new boyfriend named Mark. Unfortunately, the couple, her new boyfriend, would also break up a couple months before today's incident. During this time, her friends say that she was also a size four and she was losing a lot of weight. It could be due to the stress or it could be due to the beauty standard. You know, a lot of models are literally size zero size one or two fast forward to june 27 2008 she would meet up with her ex-boyfriend mark to hang out and the two reportedly watched a movie called ghost together according to them it seemed like everything was cordial nothing crazy was going on and according to mark he dropped ruslana off 10 hours before the incident morning of june 28th her friend would get a call from ruslana but her friend did not pick up at the time neighbors remember that morning something was a little odd with Ruslana's hair. The doorman reportedly saw that Ruslana's hair was cut short, but he does remember seeing her hair being like really choppy, like she kind of cut it off with her home scissors and like she kind of cut it off herself. So did she go through some kind of a crisis inside and she just wanted to chop her hair off? And 2.30 p.m., Again, on June 28th, Ruslana would go to the next building from her apartment. And that's when people would hear a loud thump, a bass-like sound. And it was ruled that it was self-unalive. No notes were found. Again, if you guys have not been watching my videos, I do have to replace some words because it will trigger the YouTube algorithm. I think you know by now what kind of you know words I'm switching out and what it means. Also, if you write the full term or full words on the comments, I will unfortunately have to delete it. Again, videos can be flagged, demonetized, age restricted, taken down. And so if you do write in the comments the full word, I will be deleting them. So her family and friends were in shock. Everybody says Ruslana did not seem like the type to do that. Rosanna seemed okay at the time. The autopsy showed that there had been no foul play and no DNA found under her fingernails. She also had no history of mental illness, but we all know that, you know, unlike physical illness, it's very hard to capture things that are mental, things that are in your brain. It's hard to even get help for that. There was also a construction net on the ninth floor of where she was at, and it was cut so they believe that Ruslana did that before it happened. Um, so here's the mysterious things that people really cannot get over about this case and why it's being talked about. Number one, she was at a different building at the time of her death. So did she practice this? Like, did she know where she was going to be at? Like, she had to plan out, like, getting a knife, cutting the net, like, going to another building, knowing that, like, other people are probably living there or had their offices there. Like, she had to have been there before in order to you know, do this. And number two, she had work plans and hangout plans with a friend later that day. So she did plan things out. She even on that Sunday, she was to fly out to Texas for another modeling job. She also just came back from Paris from another gig. Um, so it seemed like her life was still full of schedules and things to do and hangouts. Number four, and this is the most popular rumors and opinions out there that the Rose of the World was somehow tied to or responsible. Now, there were many rumors that surfaced like she owed money to other people or that she was requesting some money and she was going through like financial trouble, but nothing could really be confirmed. And number five, the most coincidence that ties to again this rose of the world her friend that she attended this class with her name was i believe anastasia anastasia attended rose of the world for one year and about one year after ruslana's case this model anastasia also unfortunately died self un alive the same way that Ruslana was found. I mean, one time, okay, but two times that happened with the same people from the modeling industry is very interesting. Number six, some people say the ex-boyfriend, since he was the last to see Ruslana just 10 hours before, they also spent time together as well. According to the ex, Mark says that he believes that Ruslana kind of came to say a goodbye to hang out with him for the last time, but absolutely no evidence to Mark having ties to, you know, whatever happened. And 
then if that friend who Ruslana called that morning, could things have changed or was she calling to say goodbye? There was also something very interesting that I could only find on Russian article. And it states that Ruslana sued one of her agency for almost half a million dollars. Apparently, they were withholding some of the payments that she should have been receiving from her modeling gigs. Again, a lot of things about Ruslana is very mysterious because there are various sources. Some information is hidden, some may be true, maybe not. Could this also be a piece to a mystery? And was she really struggling financially? But many people say that, you know, Ruslana's glamorous life seemed glamorous on the outside, but on the inside, it just seemed not enough for her. And possibly because models like this and even other industry people start out so young without adult supervision. I, thank God, honestly was not a teenager, but I was 19, 20 years old when I first went to Korea. And let me tell you, the entertainment industry is a humbling place. Before I entered, I thought I was like the prettiest girl the best singer like i thought i was the most confident but you enter this world it's literally like a lion's den when you're competing with so many people and there's beautiful beautiful girls people who sing so much better than you I told this story many times on my crazy grace k-pop channel that there was this one person you know when i was first training he was such a mean person he would yell at me like screaming and like sending me such a bad energy vibe that i've never felt before in my life and after that encounter i literally got insomnia for six months straight and i didn't realize what was going on because i thought i was strong enough and my hand would be shaking every day and he also used tactics of humiliation yelling and screaming and like telling you you're freaking ugly, telling you you're the worst singer ever, that was affecting me without me actually knowing it. So six months into like me battling this unknown thing, I went back to the States to stay with my parents for about two weeks. And the moment I got to my parents' house, I slept for the best that I've ever slept in that six months. When I was a trainee, that guy who was screaming on top of his lungs to us, he probably thought that he was doing this to make us stronger, to, to educate the trainees and things like that, when in reality, that was such a total wrong way to go about it. And entering the entertainment and beauty industry and trying to keep up with that beauty standard, constantly like affecting you 24 seven, and on top of that, having a breakup, and, and on top of that, going into this group that's dehumanizing, humiliating and kind of blaming you mental damages are real and it creeps up on you without you even knowing it being in the entertainment industry personally made me realize you have to be thick skinned and even if you're thick skinned which i believe i am thick skinned there are going to be many times where it will break you down and you just have to be strong enough like i said i was lucky because i was an adult i had love for my parents so do not let these experiences today ever stop you from moving forward and also believe in your guts like me when i went to that cult like church like i knew in my guts that this was not right for me i'm not saying that those are bad people because there are people with different beliefs and different you know ways that they want to go about life but it was just not for me and when it's not for you leave thank you so much for watching and let me know what you guys have thought about today's story and remember to download two dots now that you can relax and kind of like play a fun puzzle game and see you guys in my next video